Over the years, we have seen many innovations implemented by IndyCar to increase driver safety. In the five years since a tragic accident took the life of driver Justin Wilson at Pocono, we now see one of the biggest innovations being employed, a change that was set in motion following Wilson's death. With the addition of the aero screen component for 2020, what prompted this move by IndyCar and how did the final design take shape? To understand all of this, you first have to start with the last laps of Pocono in 2015. On lap 179 of the ABC Supply 500, driver Sage Karam leads the race when he loses control in turn one and hits the wall at roughly 200 miles per hour, sending debris across the track. Further back, the field begins to round the corner, taking actions to avoid the debris. In a freak event, the nose cone from Karam's car is seen bouncing on track straight into the path of Justin Wilson, who is on a direct course for contact. The seven pound nose cone strikes Wilson on the head knocking him unconscious and sending his car across the track and into the wall. Still unconscious, Wilson was extracted from the car and rushed to hospital. He underwent surgery and was kept on life support until the following day. The decision was then taken to switch off the machine. A former F1 driver and 10-year IndyCar veteran, Wilson spoke about the risks of motorsport and the need for safety back in 2012. You've got to know the risks and work out if those risks are acceptable. To me, it's acceptable, but I'm not going to stop trying to improve it. All the drivers, this is IndyCar. We're always trying to make it safer. But at the end of the day, it's a race car. We're racing hard, we're racing IndyCars, and it's fast. Wilson's Andretti teammate and the eventual race winner of Pocono in 2015, Ryan hunter Ray said more needed to be done to ensure driver safety. Maybe in the future we can work towards something that resembles a canopy, something that can give us a little bit of protection and still keep the tradition of the sport. Just to be an innocent bystander like that and get hit in the head with a nose cone is a very scary thought. The incident rattled IndyCar. Combined with the death of Dan Weldon in 2011, discussions increased between teams and management about what needed to be done to improve cockpit safety. News of Wilson's death hits F1 just nine months after the death of driver Jules Bianchi. The organization comes under pressure to provide more safety for drivers. In August of 2015, Mercedes releases a halo concept consisting of a titanium structure above the car's cockpit with a single vertical pylon in front. Its main purpose is to deflect large debris from the cockpit such as tires and wings. The open cockpit design is pursued by the FIA with initial impact testing being done on prototypes and later tested on track by Ferrari. In March of 2016, Red Bull Advanced Technologies releases a concept of what they call the Aero Screen as an alternative to the Halo. With one support on each side of the driver's head and a large curved windshield covering the front of the cockpit attached to the chassis at the sides. Advanced Technologies CEO and Red Bull Racing Team Principal Christian Horner described the Aero Screen in this way. It's more of a canopy, open-topped, so it's effectively like a big windscreen. It is more elegant and hopefully offers better visibility. So let's see what the FIA think of it. In regard to the Mercedes Halo, Horner said, Personally, I don't like it. I understand that driver safety is absolutely of paramount importance. But for me, I think I am a little bit more of a purist of open cockpit racing that has been there for 60 years. And there is danger associated with that. Of course, we have to do everything we can to mitigate that. But the protection that is being looked at, the Halo concept, would not have helped Felipe Massa and unfortunately would not have helped Jules Bianchi. The next month, Red Bull tests the AeroScreen prototype at Sochi with Daniel Ricciardo and showing the FIA the viability of their design. Former F1 driver Mark Webber had a close look during the tests and had this to say. What is the future? In 2025, will we have open cockpits? Probably unlikely. Eventually, they might need to make a change and make the cockpit closed. And whoever gets this right first will have a very, very strong contract for all single-seaters around the world. So there is also a commercial benefit to make this look sexy, safe, and beautiful for single-seaters. Despite the benefits of the AeroScreen's front windscreen, the FIA rejects the concept stating that more development needs to be done regarding questions of durability. The FIA then takes a very different route with a brief consideration of a shield concept tested by Ferrari at Silverstone in July of 2017. Ferrari driver Sebastian Vettel ultimately cuts the test short, stating the shield made him dizzy due to distortion. One week later, F1 officially announces the halo as the driver's safety component to be fitted to all cars starting in 2018. While the halo would be effective at deflecting tires and large debris, it was ineffective on smaller objects like the wing debris that injured James Hinchcliffe in 2014. For ovals, the top bar of the halo would be directly in the line of sight of the driver on a banked corner, blocking their long-distance field of view, making it difficult to judge corner entries and exits. 
but they did like what they saw of the Red Bull era screen from early concepts, and in 2016 begin development of a windscreen of their own in conjunction with the Universal Aero Kit planned for 2018. IndyCar teams up with longtime sponsor PPG Aerospace on the concept of a ballistic windscreen, tapping into PPG's knowledge of materials and data of F-16 fighter jet canopies. Former Indy driver and current team owner Ed Carpenter reacts to early rumors of the windscreen development. I need to know it's not something that's going to crush in on us or give us something else for our head to hit. If we're talking about road racing and keeping a spring out of the car, like what hit Felipe Massa in 2009, that's one thing. But in oval racing, we have big impacts with the fence, and that's an entirely different thing. Development of the windscreen continues through 2016 and well into 2017, with simulator and scale model wind tunnel tests taking place in the fall. Driver Joseph Newgarden confirms that the windscreen is very different from the Halo. We're going to run more of a screen system, more like you've seen on the Red Bull. We've done a lot of research and development and spent a lot of money trying to develop something we feel is going to be the best solution for us. We're a little bit different in IndyCar because we have ovals involved, and I think the Halo's not right in IndyCar for that reason. I think if you ask the drivers, the majority will tell you they don't want it, and the drivers are telling you that because they love open wheel racing, and they associate that with open cockpit. It's not necessarily what open wheel means, but that's what you associate it with. Finally, in February of 2018, the windscreen makes its on-track test debut with Scott Dixon at Phoenix. It's made of a proprietary OptiCore material by PPG, which has shown to be stronger, lighter, and more impact resistant than polycarbonate. Weighing 17 pounds, the windscreen can withstand a two-pound object striking it at more than 220 miles per hour. IndyCar President Jay Fry discussed a few of the considerations they were making during testing. We've had to look carefully at the distortion issues with screens, particularly the amount of adjustment a driver might have to do if he looks over it, then switches back to looking through it. You don't want a depth perception difference at 220 miles per hour, or when you're braking hard and trying to judge the closing distance on the car in front. Driver Scott Dixon had this to say after the first on-track testing. Whenever you're moving forward on safety, there's a lot of flack from different people saying an Indy car shouldn't look like that. It should be an open cockpit because of its heritage. But I think if there is any way you can increase the safety of anything, it's very important. After a second successful on-track test at IMS, diagnostics continue at PPG's facility in Alabama. Unfortunately, after two years of development, the PPG test revealed that the windscreen would not be suitable as a standalone component, possibly due to top load vulnerabilities. As IndyCar put it at the time, recent testing at PPG's facility proved that work remains before IndyCar could implement its use. What IndyCar hoped would be a substantial addition to the 2019 chassis proved to be stalled.